There he is. Look, he's stuck in there. He's lost in the sauce. Look at that. Look at that little bee. One of the botanical wonders of the world. A cactus that looks like a rock. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Crime Pairs of Botany Does. And today, we're here to film a video on this wonderful bastard, Areocarpus fissuratus, the living rock cactus, which you can see in full bloom right here. There's about nine or ten species in the genus, uh, all of which uh, occur in Mexico, except for this one species, which is common uh, in limestone areas of West Texas. Common, underappreciated, and also highly sought after and poached, which is uh, pretty tragic. You'll often see dug up specimens of this planted in a pot, you know, slowly dying in someone's garden set up or greenhouse or whatever. Uh, they're also really easy to grow from seed. There's a number of growers that do grow them ethically from seed. But, uh, you know, it being Texas, of course, a lot of it just gets poached, you know, because uh, someone thinks it belongs to them, which is tragic. That aside, let's look at how cool this species is, okay? It's basically evolved to look like the, uh, to blend in with the limestone talus that it grows in. And this plant will only ever be found growing in limestone talus, okay? It's an edaphic endemic, okay? Edaphic means soil or substrate. You're only ever going to find this plant growing in calcareous soil, that is soil with calcium carbonate in it, which is what limestone is, uh, in very arid regions. The whole stem is underground. Those little arrow-shaped things covered in that thick cuticle right there, like you're seeing right there, that warty cuticle, those are just tubercles, which are kind of like stem projections. So that whole thing is just a stem. It doesn't have any leaves. It doesn't even have any spines, because in, spine, in cacti, spines are just modified leaves. The leaves have basically evolutionarily turned into spines. So in about four to six weeks after that thing is pollinated, and I'm sure it will be because there's a number of other ones going off here, it'll produce a little fruit, and then uh, that fruit will have a bunch of seeds in it, and that's how that thing regenerates. And right here, there's probably, I don't know, 12 to 20 plants, but they're very, they're very easy to miss if they're not blooming. We got Vichelia constricta over there. That's a legume, one of the quote nurse plants. We got Ocotillo. Oh look, there's another massive area that's not blooming right there. Look at that. Look at how good it's got that coat of trichomes, that wool. Trichomes just another word for hair. Uh, right next to that the uh, baby Ocotillo. <laughs> I always laugh. I always laugh when people say deserts are boring and barren. Think again, fucko. You're just not looking close enough. Okay, that's called arrogance. Ignorance is excusable. Arrogance isn't. You bulldoze something because you think there's, quote, nothing there. You're a moron. Look at that. All these plants, all these monocots, monocotyledons, one seed leaf as opposed to two, uh, they're, just, they're just great at storing sugars. All right, little batteries of sugar. That's all that lechuguilla is, that agave. That's why it's that's why the genus agave is so good for making tequila with. It's got all that sugar that it's stored up over a few decades that it eventually uses to send up an inflorescence, a flowering stalk. Uh, but it, in the meantime, you know, you cut off all those leaf blades and it's just a massive heart of sugar. Same with this soda, all this dacelerian, which is also getting poached to make booze uh, throughout Texas. Look at that, the whole lechuguilla just forms a little colony. You cut the leaves off, you roast that thing, it's it's just pure sugar, pure syrup. Oh yeah, and look at that. There's another little aerial right there, right beneath that. Look at that, another little aerial carpus, living rock cactus hiding beneath that lechuguilla. They rely on each other. This is nice, this is a nice calcium-rich sand. All remnants of the Cretaceous uh, Seaway. There's another area right there. You know, you really got to thank the uh, Western Interior Seaway for making this rock. And this rock is the reason that plants like Areocarpus evolved in the first place. If it wasn't for the geology, they would not have evolved the way that they did and they would not look the way that they do so as to mimic limestone. It's a wonderful case of natural selection, you know? This region was not always super dry, but as it started to dry out, I'm sure selection pressures started selecting for plants that looked more like uh, the substrate. 
Look at, there's a nice echinocactus horizontal lonius, also growing somewhat submerged. What were the selection pressures? Herbivores, for instance. You can notice there's not a lot of plants out here. So what is out here gets noticed. And so if you're very conspicuous, if you're a conspicuous looking plant, you're gonna get you're gonna get picked off pretty quickly. You're gonna get eaten. And also, since it's pretty barren, uh, there's not a lot of cover. So you're gonna have to evolve a thick cuticle, which is that waxy layer that all terrestrial land plants had to evolve once again when they evolved out of green algae. There's another nice one too. That guy's getting ready to flower. And so that thick cuticle that you evolve also has the side benefit, if you make it a little warty and whatnot, of looking like a gravel substrate. And then instead of having an erect stem, a stem that pokes up, as most stems tend to do, that stem instead uh, grows downward into the ground. And so you end up with this little flat cactus, the surface of which is almost parallel with the ground and uh, barely pokes up at all. Most of the stem is underground. Oh, look, there's Encelia scoposa. That's a wonderful plant. Produces like a beautiful yellow daisy-like flower when it's, uh, when it's going off. You can see the old scapes right here. So, you know, you, people hear, oh, how does a plant evolve to look like a rock? Well, it's actually given natural selection and enough time, which humans are not really good at thinking about. We're not good at zooming out and thinking about the long span of time beyond our own lifetimes. You give it those baby steps, it's actually not that hard. God, so much good stuff here. Looks so barren. Look at that Thymophila. That's a, basically a, a marigold. Yeah, see those glands? See those orange glands on the side of that flower head, that involucre? They smell great. You got a bunch of tiny flowers inside what looks like a single flower. Thymophila acerosa. Jotropha dioica, you know, you find these huge apple-sized snail fossils here in beds like this. Uh, it's, it's pretty wild. <laughs> 100 million year old giant snail fossils. You see that? See that's And also as they start to die, well sometimes they, it's not dead, this looks like a healthy plant, but it looks like it shed some of its outer tubercles, part of the outer parts of its stem due to drought but right there that yellow stuff that is the cuticle which again is 250 micrometers thick which is very thick for a plant cuticle most plants only produce cuticles that are about nine micrometers five to nine micrometers thick so you can see how it gets that warty texture which again helps it helps it mimic the, the limestone and also uh, seals it off from the atmosphere make sure it's not losing any moisture whatsoever you know due to uh taking in co2 through the stomates and letting out water vapor and also offers it a great deal of sun protection as well uv protection as you can see it's a very barren environment that it's growing in look it's sad it's sad to see well lovely to see it but sad to see that we're missing the blooms on this old growth four-headed areocarpus look at that again you can see that thick cuticle that kind of thick cuticle at the outer margins dies off but you still have the trichomes protecting an emergent flower bud which is probably coming be coming out in like two or three weeks. Imagine how big that whole stem has to be. Jesus Christ. Another lovely one hiding beneath the sotal, partially hidden. Look at that, multiple flowers. You got like two flowers right there coming out of that one stem. That whole stem again going seven or eight inches down into that soil. Look at that. The stigma on the one on the right hasn't opened up yet and the one on the left is uh, receptive to pollen. Here you go friends you get your area right there and also blending in but relying on a different kind of mimicry the stem's not sinking into the ground you got glandula cactus uncinatus you see that it's got those long spines kind of mimics grass it kind of mimics the, those long because spines are just dead tissue spines are just dead tissue and so you can see how that those long ass recurved spines would just kind of mimic they kind of look like uh grass blades like dead like a dead grass oh christ it's getting hooked on me but then you can see it's got those tubercles, tubercles and ridges as well. It's got ribs with uh, those uh, prominent tubercles, radial spines, and then those central spines are so long. Right, right here, sister family to Cactaceae, Portulaca pilosa. You can see this guy's, oh, actually he just broke. <laughs> That's all right, those flowers are producing tons of seed. See, there's another one right there. 
It's got the trichomes, got the succulents, and got the betalane pigments. The, pink, the pigments in the pink flowers. Look at it. There's another area. You can see it's just about to bloom. Where the hell did it go? There we go. See, it's got the pink, the pink, uh, you can see those pink tables just emerging, and it's got that kind of dead tissue, that yellow keratin-like tissue, that old cuticle still around the margins of that stem. Look at that. Behold, that's a beautiful specimen right there. I'm waiting to see who's stopping by to pollinate. I just saw a couple tiny solitary bees. You know, and that's what we say out here. We say, fuck the honeybees, because the honeybees... Whatever, they didn't even evolve on this continent. We want the cool native solitary bees that have evolved with all these cacti that are being manipulated by these cacti, by the living rock cactus and the peyote, into pollinating their flowers and helping them, uh, you know, exchange their gametes and uh, produce uh, embryos in the form of seeds. So look at that, that white thing, it's the stigma, it's the gynoecium, the female part. And the plant, then all those uh, all those yellow shits, which they're about, I don't know, 200, those are the stamens. It's the androecium. It's where the pollen is uh, put out. So, you know, I, I'd imagine it's, this thing is mostly just warding in bees to collect pollen, pollen collecting bees. Maybe there's a little bit of nectar there, but, uh, you know, I, I probably just pollen. Because that yellow, that bright yellow conspicuous color. And then they come in contact with that stigma and hopefully have pollen from another flower too and then you get a fruit. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Look, so look at this. Oh, that's a beast. Look at that. That's beautiful. You know, when people poach these things and dig them up out of the ground, they lose all this. They lose all the context that these things have evolved in. They lose the reason that explains why they look like that, why they look the way that they do. And most importantly, they lose all the cool pollinators that have co-evolved with these plants. Well, yeah, look at this. Yeah, we're yeah, we're definitely kind of look. Look, Leo's posing. He's doing an old Tom Selleck. No, what was that? Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Burt Reynolds. Name is. No, yeah, what was Burt his Reynolds name? The I'll naked guy on a rook. Look, he's doing it with an aerial. That's nice. This, 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 more Marilyn Monroe. That's for the upcoming calendar we're working on. Look at that. Three three flowers on that one. That's lovely. There he is. Look, he's stuck in there. He's lost in a sauce. Look at that. Look at that little bee. I got you. You fuck. You can't hide from me. You wonderful fuck you. Look at that thing. God, that's a fucking wonderful plant. One of the botanical wonders of the world. A cactus that looks like a rock. God damn it. Can't get enough. Oh, hello, Ocotillo. Oh, he's holding on to me. Look at that. See this? Look at that guy. See that? Get some nice cloud cover for a minute. All kinds of little gnats and stuff going in there, too. I know that was an ant. It's like the, is that producing more stigmas? Or those, are, those are just anthers. They're just exceptionally juicy anthers. You get the two stigmas, and then you get the exceptionally juicy anthers and that flower on the right. Got them juicy anthers, boy. Juicy anthers. I've been sitting here trying to get these, these bees... Trying to get nice photos of them so I can identify them down to species. And they're, man, the little bastards are fast. Then they go deep in those stamens. They they get down deep inside there. You lose them for 10 seconds, but they're still in there. You can see the stamens moving around like they're kicking about, thrashing about, collecting all the pollen, and they come out. Cool little black and blue iridescent solitary bees. Much cooler than the European honeybees. See, it's kind of funny. Look, the little the little bees post up. See, that guy's posting up. He's waiting to get into that flower. I don't know why. You know, they wait to go in. I don't know if it's like they're getting hammered in there or what. They need a break. It's like going into a sauna or something, maybe. I don't know. God, that thing's rich. Look at that. It looks like uh, somebody, a little rabbit or maybe even a leaf cutter bee, chewed off some of those teeples. Look at that. We also got these little uh, these little beetles going to town. Those acme, is that acme I don't know. I gotta ask my uh, entomologist friend. He's crawling around, probably nibbling on the teeples. No doubt pollinating it. Look at that. He's crawling directly on the stigma. This, you know, that's a nice chunk of selenite right there. That would make any hippie rock shop uh, impressed. That little chunk. Look at that. Just pure gypsum. You know, I do kind of hate them, but I guess I can't knock them too much because they, they get a little bit of pollination done. There's a little bit of European honeybees. That's actually probably from the uh, killer bee colony located nearby. Let me tell you what a joy it is to uh, encounter them 
you stinging you, and when they sting you, they mark you with a pheromone, so that it more continue to sting you, especially when you're on a sketchy desert cliff uh, dominated by a talus substrate, which can be very slippery and uh, it enables you to repeatedly fall and break your ass while running away from killer bees. What an experience. Here's a cool one, Tetraclea coltri. It's in the mint family Lamiaceae, but it looks very uh, different from many members of the mint family. It also smells terrible, not pleasant. There's uh, four seeds maturing inside those calices, so two to four seeds, uh, two to four uh, ripened seeds is the uh, the uh, structure for many members of the mint family of Lamiaceae. So you can see those four right there. Like if you look at a salvia flower, it does the same thing. Once it's pollinated, you get two to four seeds maturing inside that calyx. So that seeing that is a good uh, good indication of uh, what family you're looking at. If uh, it doesn't have any flowers on it and if it throws you off. But it still has opposite leaves. And uh, you look at the flower structure. You know, it does, uh, it does, uh, it does look like a mint. Okay, and those, those anthers, you can see four stamens. And then at the bifid style in the middle right there. Like a beautiful little star in the ground. What an incredible plant. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.